Welcome to Chad Hates Carbs. Today we're going to do a chicken bake that this lady got from Costco. Um, never seen it before, I've never been to a Costco, but it uh, looked interesting, so we're going to try it. It's using basically a fathead dough um, from the fathead pizza recipe uh, and wraps up some chicken and bacon and sounds really good, so let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is take uh, eight ounces of shredded mozzarella cheese and two to three ounces of um, cream cheese and we're going to melt that in the microwave and uh, once we're, it's going to take about 45 seconds to a minute and then once that gets kind of gloopy then we're going to actually start incorporating the rest of the ingredients so let me go ahead and get that stuff melted real quick you can see that right here it's still not very it's still not incorporated it's still separated between the cream cheese and the mozzarella so I'm going to go ahead and stick it back in that was a minute and 30 because I had frozen mozzarella so I'm going to stick it back in for probably another 15 or 20 seconds. See, this is much better. It's much more consistent in terms of the, the texture. You can see that there's not as much differentiation between the mozzarella and the cream cheese. So that's the kind of thing we're looking for. So at that point, now we need to add the other stuff. So to the hot cheese concoction here, what we're going to add is we're going to add one beaten egg and three different kinds of uh, flours. Um, we've got a third of a cup of each um, in this combination. This is flaxseed meal. Uh, it is not golden flaxseed. She calls for golden flaxseed and supposedly it tastes better but I don't have any of that. We have the, our standard almond flour and then we have our standard uh, coconut flour. Again a third of a cup of each of those. So what we're going to do now is just try to incorporate all of that, kind of mix it all in. And it is a little bit tough because um, the cheese definitely wants to stay together <laughs> and the flowers don't necessarily really want to incorporate so you got to kind of get at it a little bit to get this stuff mixed in. You might wonder why I have this bowl of water over here. It's for the cheater method. If you don't want to use that you can dip your hand in water and then you can just kind of work it in your fist and just kind of work it together like this. I find that this is probably uh, ten times easier than trying to use that, so I'm kind of a cheater. Now the problem is you do you lose a little bit of dough, but in terms of the ease of being able to actually get this stuff to uh, incorporate, it's it's way way easier. So once you've got that done, what we're going to do is we're just going to lay this out. Move this stuff out of the way. We're going to lay this out on our on our sill pat here, and we want to smash it out. And again using my wet hand here to do that. Um, you can uh, use a rolling pin and uh, that's what we're going to do and you can use either a regular sill pad or you can use wax paper. I'm going to get some wax paper here in a second. Okay, I lied. I had, I had parchment paper. So let's go ahead and roll this out. Okay, got them divided into three. I didn't divide them very evenly, but hey, that's all right. So I've got two cups of chicken. This is a rotisserie chicken chopped up. Um, rotisserie chickens are nice and cheap, and that's already cooked. We got a third of a cup of parm. Third of a cup of parm, sorry. One cup of shredded mozzarella. We've got a quarter cup of bacon crumbles. Uh, two teaspoons of sour cream, or sorry, two tablespoons of sour cream. Two tablespoons of mayonnaise. One teaspoon of garlic powder. Uh, half a teaspoon of salt. I'm just going to mix that stuff up. And then we're going to slap it inside of our rolls here. So now we've got the stuff, the filling, um, kind of on there, balanced between them, is about as good as I can here. Um, this one is the biggest by far. So I'm just trying to kind of mix these up. I think I'm going to go ahead and mix them in with this one. And now I do the fancy part that I suck at, which is the Try to fold this stuff so that it ends up staying together. <laughs> uh, 
Yep. That's about what I expected. I was not going to be very good at that part. Okay. So that is not very successful. Looks to me like maybe we need to make him make it thinner or something. All right. Well, yeah, because that's still pretty thick. doesn't. Yeah, that's definitely not thin enough, I don't think. I think that's the secret. Well, let's try tearing some of that off and then using some of that to seal up the middle. So over the topping, I'm just going to take some butter, I'm going to melt it real quick, and then we're going to brush it on, and then sprinkle parm on top of that. Alright, so we've got our melted butter, I'm just going to brush it on here. There we go. Now we're going to do the extremely fancy method of taking some parmesan. That's a little bit chunky there. Sprinkle some parm on there. She calls for uh, shredded parm, but you know that's pricey and I'm super high class so it's only the best uh, bulk parmesan from Sam's Club for me. Alright, that's good. So we're going to slap this in there. 40 to 50 minutes is what it says. Um, I've got mine on convection so we'll hope that it's closer to 40. See you soon. So that's after about 45 minutes-ish. Um, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the, the little one. You can see that the... Uh, actually, I uh, probably shouldn't try to eat it directly like that. Because that will hurt myself. So let me get a knife here. Let's cut it up. crust is probably a little thick yet. It's thin on the top. Oh man, that bacon smells good. Mm. That's a good time. It's definitely crunchy. That bottom uh, Bottom crust uh, definitely uh, cooked up pretty good. Mm. That is delicious. So, to uh, to summarize, next time probably roll it out thinner. Maybe even d divide the dough in two. Roll it out once, and then create them. Sorry, the braces are making it hard to chew. Hard to chew those bacon crumbles. Um, but yeah, definitely. Uh, if I think if you thin it out a little bit, the crust will, will be a little bit thinner, easier to work, and then you don't have the the issue with it being quite so thick. You can see here. I mean, it's split at the top. These split at the top. because the, the dough is a little thin um, in certain areas, but obviously it's, they're weighted so that they're going to open up pretty good. So, yeah, definitely a keeper though. Definitely going to be keeping this one on the rotation. So until next time, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you all later. Have a good one.